So I've used my enormous technical prowess to figure out how to... He's lying. I saw him just randomly press buttons till it worked. I'll catch him out later. Just you wait. Okay, in all honesty, I'm still learning and it's very tricky and I probably should have read the manual and it took me hours to get this far. But I am using the X-T4 to record this as a webcam going through OBS. And in those hours when I was learning it, I looked on the web, I, I looked on various forms to try and figure out how to get the thing to behave properly and even be recognized as a webcam. And it proved quite difficult. So here's a quick tutorial on what I've learned so far. And to demo the Fujifilm X-T4 with the kit lens as a webcam. It's amazing, by the way. Does anybody want a second-hand Brio? Chapter 1. He learns how to use focus. <laughs> Chapter 1. Set up up to... Oh no, it's not working. Okay, these instructions are for the Mac. First thing to do is go to Fuji, get the software, download it, install it. You have to reboot the computer. You're golden, in theory. The thing is that you also have to get the camera into a mode where it wants to act as a webcam. So you need to then get a decent cable. In this case, I've got a USB-C to USB-C cable that's not too long. I learned that the hard way using the Brio. You need a very good cable for this sort of thing. And then the next step after that, which I discovered to be the case, give me a second is you need to tell the camera in the connection settings to do this. Now, it says in the instructions on the web, USB mode, the X-T4 doesn't say USB mode. It says something along like USB tethering. So you turn that on, and then, in theory, when you plug the computer into the camera, or vice versa, whichever way you think, it should then magically, because it says it will, start the Fuji... Um, X camera app and couple everything up, but it doesn't work that way. What you have to do is open up whatever you're going to be doing the webcam with. In my case, that's uh, OBS. I then give the video source to OBS. OBS opens that, so it sees it as a standard uh, webcam source, and then and only then will the marvelous little app fire up. So that is a major problem that means that you think it's not working. The second thing that really trips you up is that you turn the camera off, you close OBS, you do anything, and then suddenly <coughs> it no longer works full stop. And what I've discovered is that the camera kind of forgets that it's in webcam mode. And if it does that to you, it's not the end of the world. I tried rebooting the computer, I tried doing all sorts of stuff, None of that worked. What I found worked was to simply flip the camera from film mode into camera mode and back again, or from camera mode into film mode and back again, and it magically starts to think that it's actually a webcam. I have no idea why. It appears, in general at the moment, I'm just running it in camera mode using the film camera dial, and if it does the forgetty thing, I do the flip flip and it comes back to life. So then, when we've got all of that, what things can we do to make the webcam behave itself a little bit better? Making it work a little bit better. So the next, next gotcha is autofocus. Revenge is a dish best served cold. So now the dial is set to S. The focus area is in the center, face tracking on, everything else is on, and it appears to be focusing correctly on my face. He just had the autofocus set incorrectly. We all knew that, really. So next, I will go on to the other gotchas that I've found. Yes, there really is more for him to bang on about. Carbon-based life forms are weird. So now, moving on, the other gotcha I found with it is that once you've turned it into webcam mode, it, it will not let you change settings on the camera. So if you start... Uh, with the autofocus on, the autofocus will remain on. So any settings that you want to set up on the camera, you have to set when it's in camera mode and not without the USB plugged in, get it the way you want it, then plug the USB in. That one is really foxy. Maybe I'm doing something stupid, 
but that seems to be the only way I could do it. So I have to unplug it, turn the little dial on the front to manual focus and plug it back in. And then of course it might have forgotten it's a webcam, blah, 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 blah. We've just done that, but then it works. So then the next thing is how well does it work? Seriously, Fuji, you only have one job to do. It's a camera. What do you guys do now? Let me try to remember. So, okay, let's look at how well it works as a webcam. Well, it's massive and it's a pain in the bottom, if I'm completely honest. So if we look at it now, it sat on a massive tripod because the little tripod I had for the Brio was ridiculous and it was about to fall over. But if you're committed, then it will work. However, this camera is capable of 4K in 10 bit depth. You're not gonna get that on a Mac. It seems to be going into OBS or pretty much any uh, through the standard Mac piping, shall we say, you get 1080p and that's what you're stuck with. And at 1080p, it still seems to be 420 by looking at w the way that the green screen's working. That's my guess. So in some ways, the picture's a little bit disappointing. What you do get is all the great color. You don't get all that crushing and everything in which I complained about in the Brio. Look, I've got this red t-shirt, it's not blowing out. So it's infinitely better in those terms. And of course, the lens is infinitely better. So you get a much nicer image. But compared, I would imagine, to actually recording internally or using HDMI to an external recorder, this webcam mode is not going to be as impressive by a long way. It's still going to look a bit webcammy. I don't really mind for this sort of video, but if I was, if you compare this to the sort of video I can capture when I actually just vlogish with this and hold it out, then it's fundamentally different. So I'll see if I can do a demo of that now and demonstrate the difference between internally captured video and this video. The other big difference, of course, is that the internally captured video can be 10 bit. This will only be 8 bit. HDR is just better in every way, in case you had not noticed. Okay, and now I'm using the internal microphone on the camera, so it's going to pick up a lot more echo. It's going to pick up the fans on my computer quite a bit. I'll try and get rid of those in post. This is really to dem demonstrate the image. I'm still in manual focus. Everything else is uh, auto. So we are, uh, in theory, we should be getting a good quality. You can just see the green screen behind me. Uh, this is in 4K, 4, uh, 420. Let's uh, compare that to the image, the, the quality of the images I captured before. Now, while I'm in this mode, I'll discuss something. This will be capturing in F-Log, whereas before, because it's in webcam mode, it will have been capturing in sRGB. So it, to ingest this into my 10-bit pipeline, I had to use the Fuji supplied cube file. If anybody's interested in how I did that, then go right ahead and put something in the comments. Let's compare. Stop, Dave. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? Just stop, Dave. Whoops, I meant Alex. The moment I turned it back on to use it as a webcam, it failed to register itself, so I had to do the flicky thing with the mode switch again. That worked just fine. The difference in quality is unspeakable. It's hugely, hugely better when you use it recording itself than as a webcam. I guess that's to be expected. The convenience of a webcam kind of makes it still worthwhile. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope my computer's finally stopped messing with my video and being well behaved, uh, as well behaved as this beautiful camera is. And I hope you have a marvelous Easter we uh, weekend. If you're watching this before the weekend, I know what I'm going to be doing most of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs>